Today is Tech Friday. Yay! And I'm glad you're all here because there's a lot to talk about. Hello, JD Lady. All right. We, OBS 30.2.0 has released and there's a lot of stuff. We'll be going over the patch notes first to follow along. Here's the patch notes. 30.2. All right. Link went through chat. Yay. Let's dig into the new features. Yes. So they've added support for multi-track video streaming, which for Twitch is known as enhanced broadcasting. And you can see more about enhanced broadcasting here. And essentially what this does is it takes care of figuring out the best quality signal to stream to, and if you have a powerful enough graphics, graphics card, how many of those signals to put out to Twitch. So, you know, right now I, I have five, which is the max. Uh, so if you click the gear icon uh, on your screen, you go to quality, you notice I have 1080p60, 720p60, 480p30, 3060p30 and 160p30. So those are automatically generated by Twitch uh, or by the this OBS thing going on, this OBS and Twitch handshake. And also it decides codecs and everything else. I just have to click turn on enhanced broadcasting. I don't have to worry about bitrate or anything else. It just happens. It's really fantastic. And that means people who are on mobile or have limited internet can watch at a lower bandwidth and get a, a good looking stream because in earlier tests I was I was in the, the the beta test for for this particular feature for enhanced broadcasting and I was getting reports back that the 720p did look better through enhanced broadcasting so yay, and that's because your machine is doing it and you have newer codecs and things to translate the video than what is on, say, a Twitch server or what you decide. So enhanced broadcasting makes your life a whole lot easier. And this will also help when AV1 finally becomes a thing. This will make it a lot easier. Now, AV1 is sort of a thing, but it isn't widely supported on all sorts of devices. Like if your phone is just a few years old, it may not support AV1 and then you couldn't see the stream. AV1's the future to be clear, but it's not totally here yet. That'll, that'll take time because not all browsers support it and uh, everything, but eventually that should probably be the way things go. So this will help with all the streaming settings into AV1 and going if your machine can record in AV1, great. If you upload that to say YouTube, they're not necessarily going to give an AV1 signal. They're going to ch change that, transcode that into you know what, what they need to broadcast to everybody. So you can do uh, stereo or mono audio with that. Now this feature is currently only available, I'm reading right from the, the new features article. This feature is currently only available on Windows and requires an NVIDIA GTX 900, GTX 10, or RTX 20 series GPU or newer. So that, that's quite a few cards that, that will work with it. If you have anything in the 20 or 30 series or the, the 4000 series, it, it should all, those should work. Or an AMD RX 6000 series GPU or newer. So if you have an AMD card, or NVIDIA card, probably within the last couple of years this year, you're probably set. Just make sure they can do it. Uh, support for other operating systems and GPU vendors is planned. So they're going to expand the GPU cards, and this currently isn't available on Mac, but that will happen at some point in the future. Okay, and then it says what data is is sent when you start the stream so you know how that handshake occurs and there will be there's also multi-track video settings so you can set the maximum video tracks i just let obs take care of it at the maximum so i get five going out uh, they've added support for enhanced rtmp slash flv multi-track audio and video 
And one of the large things we're going to talk about is that they added the hybrid MP4 format. And we have a whole separate article for what hybrid MP4 is and all that. This is what allows us to insert the chapter markers into a file and uh, supported by most video players and editing software such as DaVinci Resolve. And so we'll go over all that. That's going to be a big portion of what we're doing today, talking about that. But uh, changes to OBS 30.2 added Linux support to the native NVEC encoder, a couple more Linux things. They've added Composable Theme System to simplify theme creation, maintenance, and enable future customization options. So there's now an Appearance tab in the settings. You can change some themes. Uh, it's not really a full-featured thing yet, but it's there, again, definitely for future updates. So you can change some themes. Some of the colors aren't bad, but eventually this will, this will be more robust. They have various UI and theme tweaks. The rec default recording format on Mac OS is now a fragmented MOV, which can be useful in just being able to pause the recording and coming up, which is something hybrid MP4 allows us to do. Prioritize the NVDEC NVDEC decoder on NVIDIA systems, just appearance of volume meters, and just appearance of multi-view borders, and then there is a whole ton of bug fixes. I am going to take a kitty break and let the cat in because the cat is meowing at the door. You have to be on stream. That, that, that's the rules. You come in here meowing at me, you, you, get, you gotta be on stream. This is, this is the kitty portion of, of our stream. Oh, you're happy today. Oh, 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 time to get down, isn't it? Okay, 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 relax, relax, calm down. Uh, we're going to take a look at the new OBS interface, see what it looks like. First thing we want to do is show you the audio mixer. And as you can see, this has just a different design to it. And uh, I, I think it looks rather nice, actually. The nice little design upgrade. Otherwise, it works the same. You can see the stream up chapter marker thing we're going to be talking about and the stream up annotations. The appearance thing is all under settings, which is where we're going next. So over here in controls, down to settings, click settings, get a window. Yay, window. And now you have this handy dandy appearance tab. Click appearance, you get styles. The, the theme is yammy, it still will be, but you can go with, you know, different colors. Oh, you can't see the color change necessarily with this one, so we'll go down here. Yeah, you know, these are red and blue now. Uh, let's see here, gray is just kind of this gray. Uh, I'm not going to do light because that is very bright, and then this one makes everything, you know, these colors, but I'm going to go back to default. Oh, the other thing, a uh, stream. And so to do the multi-track video thing with the enhanced broadcasting and all that, you click stream, you know, service Twitch, you connect your account. Uh, this, this is all grayed out because I'm currently streaming, but uh, you click this box here, enhanced en uh, enable enhanced broadcasting, and you don't worry about any of this. This is all taken care of for you. Just doesn't matter. You, you click that. A lot of people are wondering, well, what's the best thing? And recommendations are always changing. This will get you the best stuff for your current, your current uh, setup. Your graphics card and everything. It takes a look at all those things. And it just takes care of it. If you want to mess with that stuff, you are absolutely free to do it. Just, you know, uncheck this box here. And then the big thing we're talking about, though, is you go to the recording tab and recording format, hybrid MP4 beta. Here is everything about the hybrid MP4 format that OBS has created, right? And uh, let's go back here. This is hybrid MP4. It allows you to do a 
Uh, well, I'll just read what, what the first sentence here says. Hybrid MP4 is the name of new output format included in OBS 30.2 that aims to provide reliable and compatible output without the drawbacks of traditional or fragmented MP4. It remains recoverable even if writing the file is aborted uh, due to system crashes or power outages while still maintaining wide compatibility. You can, just like you could with MKV files, well, like you still can with MKV files, you can pause your recording, you can unpause it, it will reassemble. If something fails, there's more of a likelihood you can get it back without any problem. Normal MP4, it just stops altogether. Uh, but this at least gives you a chance to create a continuous thing. If you need to pause recording, you can. And now the big thing with the hybrid MP4 is chapter markers. And this is incredible. I'll show you uh, how it works in normal OBS. And then we'll go through the StreamUp plugin to do chapter markers, which are fantastic. You have to have the hybrid MP4 format, which has its own set of advantages, right? That we just went over. Pat, if you have any questions, please bring them up. I'll gladly, gladly talk you through them. So we can go to settings and output recording again, hybrid MP4. Hybrid MP4 is checked. Yay, yay. And you can do chapter markers. And what you do is you set up a hotkey if you just have regular OBS. So you go to hotkeys, right? And you go down. Until you find, oops, until you find add chapter marker hybrid MP4 only, and you create a hotkey. And every time you press a hotkey, it will make a chapter marker, and we'll show you what that looks like in a moment, on your video. And then when you drag your video in to be edited, it will, a little mark will appear where that chapter marker is. It's fantastic. The, the, Problem is, you can't really name these or anything like that. So that's where the StreamUp plugin comes in. And uh, StreamUp is a company, has a whole bunch of plugins for OBS that are really useful. And as you can see up here, we have, if you want to set a hotkey for that, you can. Where'd it go? Add default chapter marker StreamUp for the, the StreamUp doc. Okay. All right. Making sense? And this lets... Uh, this plugin lets chapter markers be far more dynamic than normal. Uh, with, without this plugin, you can't do these, these things. You can download a, a, the Windows installer zip, and when you unzip it, it's an executable. Just do the executable. It will appear in OBS for you without having to move any other files or anything like that. So this is where you find the chapter marker manager for OBS by stream up and then if you want a video on it guy who made it andy lippy uh, has has one and once you have it installed uh you'll notice you get a couple of docs you may have to go to docs and click on oh it's behind my head hold on and so if you go to docs and stream up chapter marker manager and stream up chapter annotations so make sure these are checked and then you'll get these docs down here. All right. And if I want to create a chapter marker, I get to put in a chapter name. I like pie. Save chapter marker. Now when I go into the video, I have a chapter marker. And it'll be named I like pie when I go over it. You click the gear. You have settings. Default chapter name. So whatever you want to name, just the chapter names to show up as... So if you just want to call it chapter, you can. If you want to call it elephant bricks, you could do that as well. And you can show previous chapters. So you get this window down here, which shows you the previous chapters, indicating things are done. You can see when I switch scenes. Oh, you can't right now. Uh, never mind. We'll take care of that in a moment. Uh, so add chapter trigger source. So it tells you where it's from. Insert chapter markers into video file. So I want these to appear on my hybrid MP4. So I click that. Export chapter markers to file. I'm getting both a text and an XML file along with my video. These go to your default video location. So wherever you're, re wherever you're recording your videos to on your hard drive, the text and XML will appear there. 
Now, automatic chapter settings, set chapter on scene change, and you'll be able to see it. If you want to support the plugin, there's a button to do that, okay? And then down here, we see chapter marker, save chapter marker when I create a chapter marker. And then as soon as I hit the save button, I like pie manual came down here telling me I made it. And then every time I change a scene, demo window, host, you know, as it says, what scene I'm going to, and that I, I indeed have changed scenes. Now this box here will open the annotation doc as well. And so I can write myself a note, you know, if I want more information than just the chapter marker, blue skies look good today. Click save annotation, annotation saved, and there we go. Now there is a companion piece that I tried out yesterday. And some of you may have noticed the constant repeating chapter markers. Uh, I asked about this last night on, on the video I'm about to share. And there will be an update tomorrow, unfortunately not today, so that there is a streamer bot function that works with this, that it, because it's all by stream up. So they have, they built a series of streamer bot actions and commands that interface with the stream up chapter marker and stream up chapter annotations. Right now, I have taken that out because I'm waiting for the update tomorrow. So if something does happen and I want a, a marker for it, I took someone else's tools and we'll go over that as well. And so I can type exclamation marker and still using streamer bot form a marker, but it won't be, it won't record it in here because it's not tied to streamer bot. Now the neat thing about both of these chapter marker plugins, uh, commands for streamer bot, both the stream up and this one by a creator called Nutty, is that one, your mods can use them by typing exclamation mark marker. Two, not only do they create a marker on the video, but that marker will also be created on your Twitch video. So when you go to your Twitch highlight thing, the markers will be there as well. And so what, whatever one you, you wind up using, exclamation mark marker will set up so that it's both on the video and on the Twitch VOD as well, which is fantastic. Did a short record earlier so I could show you all what the text file looks like. Here's the text file that was created. Let's get the mouse going. And so chapter marker or the date, right? When I, when I start seeing, it's the first, it'll be the first marker. When I switch to the game, I created another marker six seconds in. Three seconds later at nine seconds, I change the scene to BRB. Host, and then it gets annotations. I did the, the annotation box I just showed you. And remember, this is only through the Stream Up plugin. This is not native to OBS yet, if it ever will be. But right now, this is part of the Stream Up plugin. BRB host. And oh, look how neat these time codes are. You're going to want to remove the annotations for this next part. But I could just copy these because it's a text file, paste them into the, the description of my YouTube video, and I have automatic chapter markers for people to jump to in my YouTube video. I, I would just delete the annotation things because those might not be relevant to anyone. Uh, <laughs> but so if there's a cool thing like, oh, that, that was a pretty awesome moment, make a chapter marker for it. You know, you, you can name it here, and it, it's wonderful. Again, this is only if you're using the stream up plugin. What this looks like in the video, click over to DaVinci Resolve here, which is behind everything. I, I dragged in the video. So here's the, that text file was created from this video. I pull it down into the timeline, right? And now I have all these blue markers, which is start. So that's the name of my first scene is start. So start, and then later in the timeline, when I change scenes again, when I changed it to the game scene, there's the marker for that, the marker for the BRB screen right there. And yeah, it, it just, on, there's your markers right there. They just appear in your video. It's amazing. You can also see these chapters 
if you use something like VLC, uh, they, these chapters will appear in a VLC player of your video and other editors will also do this. But since I use DaVinci Resolve for everything, hey, it works for me. Uh, you, you can drag the file and try it out in your editor of choice, see if it's supported. I know uh, there are going to be more support coming in for these. So if it doesn't work yet, it probably will in the near future uh, for your video thing, uh, for your video editing software. So yeah, they're right there. You can just edit to them. You easily find where you need to go. It's really fantastic. This will make making clips so much easier. I want to make a clip, you know, something happens. I quickly input a chapter marker and I can find that section easy. So here's StreamerBot, my StreamerBot window. And I have the guy who made these. It, again, it's, it's pay what you want for, for these commands. Again, this doesn't interface with the, with the StreamUp stuff. So this is kind of separate. But for today, it offers me a way that doesn't continually repeat the action uh, like this current StreamUp does thing. Again, stream, stream up fix coming tomorrow, and we'll probably show that off when it is working properly next week. To install a command, uh, a series of commands in a streamer bot, click this import button here, and you get this massive window with an import string, all this stuff. And once you download the file, like Nutty names all his stuff .nut, but uh, this will go into StreamerBot just fine. So you click it and you drag it over into the import string window. Oop, it appears and I have all the commands right here. Now I'm not gonna import this again because I've already done it. But you, as you can see behind here, here's all the commands because I hit the, I hit the import button here and all these actions, if I use the proper terms, these actions and commands come in automatically. So you have two ways to do this through Twitch chat now. Uh, stream up or nutty and choose whichever you want. I'm probably going to go with stream up uh, after the, up, the update tomorrow just because the annotation thing is amazing and that my mods can also, also be able to annotate and create chapter markers, fabulous. The other thing to know about importing actions like this and commands, when you import a command into StreamerBot, StreamerBot does not turn it on automatically. So this marker command right here was not on automatically. So you right click and you click enabled so that it works because by default, these are just shut off and it'll be in red. So if I disable it, notice it's in red and re-enable it. And then once again, I type marker in chat, as I just showed earlier, you, you, get, a, you get a marker in the text file. And let me move this over so you all can see it. Here is today's switching so far. Like I just changed to my host at around 56 minutes in, changed back, it hasn't updated completely, but here's the annotation, blue skies look good today. Here's the chapter marker. I like pie. You know, it's all, all right here. And this is the stream you're watching right now. Let's go over Mixline. Yeah. So Mixline allows you to route your audio however you want. And it's really fantastic. And I haven't had a problem in a very long time with it. And instead of Windows audio settings always being reset after an update or whatever. Mixline just keeps it all. And I, I don't even touch the settings in Windows. You just leave them all on default. Maybe you want to change one or two in, in the Windows settings just because. But uh, Mixline handles everything and it doesn't reset the settings. They just stay where they're at. I, I have to say that, you know, I, I've had a, a couple minor issues with it. But I, I figured that out or, you know, there was an update because I was in the beta program and it was in beta. But it, it is very solid. It is much more solid than the, the Windows <laughs> sound setting things, right? 
Okay, <laughs> so let's get into what it looks like and all of that. Here is Mixline. As you can see, it's fairly simple. You may have to create a Logitech account if you don't already have one. It, it's free to do. And as you can see, I have my little account icon up here. Uh, you have your settings, or you can you know, automatically start Mixline, which you'll probably want to do. Let's have this have this slider on and keep Mixline background closed. So your audio options that you choose are always on and always working. Up top here, uh, magnifying glass will be better. You have add input. This will add any, any program you have open will appear in this list. Once you close it, it will still always be here. Like I don't have Windows Media Player open, but it's on the list now because at one point I had Windows Media Player open and I chose where to make it go. And then you have add outputs. So I have my normal speakers, which everything can go to my normal speakers. And then I have my roadcaster channels that things go to, and these respond to the channels on my roadcaster duo, which then takes the signal and puts it uh, and then I tell OBS to take that Roadcaster Duo channel, all those channels, and send the signal, that audio signal, out to you. As you can see, when you hear music, I have my title. I have title when I play the music at start of stream and the BRB and the end screen. And I have going to Roadcaster Duo secondary. You can either click plus and add any output you. Want. You, had, you already made available over here, and it will just create it under here and draw a line to it for you. Or you can you know, draw a line to it yourself. So you don't have to, if you have a lot of these, you don't have to go searching for them. You can just plus find it on your list and it'll automatically make the connection. And so when I'm talking, because I don't want the music to come over my speakers and then be picked up by my microphone giving you audio weird audio doubling issues. I mute my speakers, but I still have it there when I want to listen to music through Tidal and I'm not streaming to all of you. I just come in and I unmute it. And, you know, you can do it to all these. And then you can collapse these down and make, make this look a little more tidy. There is this mix line stream thing. So if you wanted to, I know there are there are uh, plenty of audio mixing and routing software that want to give you one stream uh, to put into OBS, and then you could control the volume by these slider bars. Well, I've never liked doing that, so I have each channel individually marked. You can also do this with the Wavelink. As you can see, Elgato Virtual Audio, Wavelink Aux 1, Aux 2, Wavelink Browser, Game, Music, SFX. I could add all of these and have stuff going to each individual Wavelink channel and then put each channel that I wanted into OBS. And I could have so many audio channels now because now I can control audio sources using my Rodecaster Duo and change their volumes with the sliders. And I also have the knobs on my stream deck to control the Elgato WAV files. Nick, hello, welcome on in. Thank you so much for the raid. You have now created a chapter marker on this video, so yay. Uh, welcome on in, glad to see you. Hello, Phoenix Path, good to see you again too. Sound things switch when Windows updates occurs or just because Windows is on a day that ends with Y, but when I connect things with Mixline, I don't have those problems. It's, it's amazing. So if you are into needing to move your audio around and you have virtual channels and things like that, I highly recommend this. These are my uh, Bluetooth headphone, fancy Bluetooth headphones I got a while ago. And oh, I, I was talking about uh, this Mixline stream. This is a default thing where they really want you to, or they would like you to uh, connect everything to Mixline stream and then it, to make it easy in OBS, you just add the Mixline stream as your audio source, and then everything's flowing in there. The, the, what I don't like about that is uh, I can't... Controlling the individual volumes is hard because now I have to click over here 
and I have to click the volume up and down like that. And I, I would rather just control it with the levers on my Roadcaster Duo or the knobs on my Stream Deck Plus because that's that's a lot easier than having to find find the thing. I can just find this channel that the audio is going to and raise and lower the volume there. That's it, just way more convenient. But if if this works for you by connecting things to here and having just that one audio channel in your OBS or wherever you go with it, you can certainly do that. If you have any questions about OBS 30.2, about hybrid MP4, about chapter markers, about the stream up plugin for chapter markers, or about mix line, please put them in chat, ask away. Or if you have any other questions in chat, you want to talk about producing a TTRPG, you just want to talk about how to stream in general, by all means, add, add a question. Hit that follow button down there if you haven't already. That helps me out tremendously. Uh, just, a, just a follow. It would be fantastic. All right. Thank you all for being here. Please be kind to yourselves. Be kind to others. Stay tuned for the raid because that really helps out. And I will see you all then. Have a fantastic weekend. Bye.